still got more matches than Trundle has teeth. So let's keep things going and head over to Joe and Quickshot for the next game. I got a question about I, that. I don't know who's right in your line shots, but they're getting worse. I thought on the rework of Trundle he was given teeth. Oh, really? Just a thought. I'll have to check the artwork. It's not all gums attacking yeah, you Yeah, I, I think I... It actually mean something. Exactly. <laughs> so, guys, <laughs> let's get back on topic with that one. We're just a few minutes away from the start of that game that Shox was talking about. Evil Geniuses versus Gambit. And both of these teams secured two wins without loss yesterday. Yeah, so not only did they each go 2-0, and oh, they are tied in the standings at 13 wins and 12 losses each. And this match is a little bit more important for Gambit because they're currently zero. Zero and three against evil geniuses in the split. So in a tiebreaker scenario, no matter what happens, if EG and Gamma are sitting together, Gamma are behind EG. Therefore, the winning point in this game is more valuable to Gambit as it'll give them that more difficult tie scenario with EG. All confusing. <laughs> don't, don't worry, guys. This is exactly the same for us uh, here as well. We, we've got actual professional mathematicians on standby for the, uh, for the end of tomorrow that can actually work stuff out because it's all crazy. Let's have a look then at the two teams, starting with Evil Geniuses on the blue side. Wicked, of course, in the top lane. Snoopy going to be coming back. He is without a defeat since Shaka joined the team. Froggen in the mid lane. Yellow Pete and Crepo, the duo. And, of course, for Gambit, it will be Darian Epp in the top lane. Diamond and Prox in the jungle, Alexic in the middle lane, Genja and Voidal as your AD carry and support. Well, Evil Geniuses have been dominating Gambit all season, and they're pretty confident that they can keep that up. I feel like we have to win every single game this week to secure our spot in the top six. Gambit's just one of the, the, one of the five obstacles in our way, basically, to get there. I think EG is a stronger opponent for us because their play style counters ours a bit. I still think we have an edge over them just because of our long history with Gambit. They have improved a lot recently with their boot camping, but I still feel quite confident going into that game due to past results against them. So then let's check what you guys at home have been thinking about this one. It's bang on even, basically. 52% of the population think that EG is going to be victorious here against Gambit. 3-0 up, the way Evil Geniuses and Gambit were playing yesterday. I think I'm sitting on that fence as well because I, it, it's very difficult to call who is performing very well right now. Well, we've seen classic matches between these two teams and under their various names in the past, so probably going to be the same here again. And don't forget, guys, you can still vote for all of today's remaining games and all tomorrow's matches over at lolesports.com where you can also find the results, player info, VODs, and a whole lot more. So... In the second game of the day, EG and Gambit are going to be taken to the stage, and one of these teams will be racking up their first loss of the weekend. Both teams yesterday looked incredibly good, but let's start with EG. They were able to pick up that win when they were in complete control, which is one thing. But against Meet Your Makers, they were quite far behind. They managed to hold on and claw back and take another victory. Yeah, the first thing that we really noticed from both of the games yesterday is that Evil Geniuses really showed their growth. Uh, in the match against MYM in particular, they gave up first blood early on, on another failed tower dive, um, and they stalled the game out after that, after the mistakes, for long enough to get back into it. They didn't get caught out, they played patiently, they simply found a way to get themselves back in the game by farming up the necessary items, farming up the jungle, and then picking fights that they could win. And, you know, I've highlighted already, but with the current head-to-head -head lead against Gamut, Evil Geniuses are guaranteed a higher place position regardless of the outcome of this match. So there's a little less pressure on them coming into this game. Gambit, on the other hand, really, really ha impressed us yesterday with that chaotic game, loads and loads of kills in them. They also defeated MYM, of course, but it was the, me it was the uh, win against Alternate for me that was more convincing. I mean, if we look back at that game, Diamond, Darian, and Genja all had perfect games, didn't die. Yeah, the impossible mission. Darian had a clean game. Zero <laughs> deaths to his name. And when they did play against Alton, they just looked like the classic, aggressive Moscow fight, a gambit that we've come to know and love. And the reason I highlight that in particular is because of Diamond Prox. He played Lee Sin in both of the matchups. He was absolutely phenomenal. He was setting up kills, he was all over the map, and he was setting up plays for his team. You also can't discount the fact that Genja went back to Misfortune, a champion that we've I haven't really seen him play a lot uh, recently, and the most impressive part of Genja playing MF is he was super aggressive in lane. Uh, he was able to pick up kills, he was picking up trades, he went for his trademark triple door and his bloodthirster build, which I'm still on the fence about. 
But, you know, he's leveled up his game. He's gone back to a champion he's infinitely familiar with, and it worked. Yeah, and we had all these questions, didn't we, about the boot camp. Has this boot camp helped Gambit to, you know, bring back their, their former reputation, I guess we can say, and what they used to do, which is boot camp a week and a week and a half before each major event, come into it massively strong. And let's not forget, they lost 60 to 70% of the games. That's what their manager wrote on Facebook yesterday. So it wasn't the most successful boot camp in the world in terms of results, but it's obviously had an effect on the team. I don't think we can call the boot camp a success yet, and for one reason. The teams that they beat yesterday, they have been beating for most of the season already. And in particular, I mean, alternate, they're 4-0 against alternate. Even yeah. with the downturn as Gambit, they found a way to beat alternate. This, to me, is the matchup that will answer that question. If Gambit can pick up their first win of the split against evil geniuses who have beat them all three previous times, I would say the boot camp was a success. Well, we're going to find out here in the next... <laughs> 40 <laughs> to 70 minutes. In, in, in some time in the very near future, let's say that. We're going to get into champion select first of all, though. What are we expecting from this one, quick shot? Um, I would think that a Leeson ban may be considered against Diamond Prox, maybe make him a little bit uncomfortable. I would even think that maybe the likes of a Thresh ban or a Misfortune ban may even be possible just to try and disrupt Genji and Voidal. But I don't know if MY, uh, EG are going to feel the same. A Lee Sin ban against Diamond Prox. Is it 2011 again? <laughs> no, it's not. But he's pulling them in again because yesterday he played it brilliantly. They've taken out Zed against Alex Itch and also the Sona from Voidal a ban, which is been thrown their way because they've realized that Gambit love having Sona in their lineup, which whatever the weather. Now, I find that interesting because of how well Krepo played Sona in both of his games yesterday. I don't think he messed up a single crescendo, and I think he only missed one champion who was aiming for in all of them. It was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant performance. And they had the option to first pick it. What this also yeah. means is Aatrox is open. Darian's played Aatrox, Wicked's played Aatrox, as is Zack, and I wonder what they're going to pick up. Well, Shen's left open from this one, and it looks like we are going to be seeing Shen coming straight off that. We'll expect Wicked to be playing that and maybe able to uh, earn his Bricked nickname here once again. We'll see from that one. Right now, Gambit are cycling through champions, most of which I'm not falling for right now. The Thresh, though, I would say has a very high uh, chance of coming in, and a Zack they go for. In so yet. the thing about the Shen being locked in, I think it's a little interchangeable with Snoopy and Wicked. Snoopy does tend to like those sort of utility type of jungles a little more. And I think the fact that Aatrox is still open, that Nasus is still available, um, even though Jarvan's been taken away, I think Evil Geniuses may keep that option open to maybe swap that one away because they haven't revealed anything with a Shen. You know, Shen just gives you that power of Stand United. What they do need to get to wrap around that will be a little bit more damage. Well, let's see then. You can see discussions high. Amongst the team, it looks like they might go for the mid laner here. They, uh, the thing is, on the blue side, it doesn't really matter when you put it in there. It can always be counter picked off later than that. So when I'm seeing an Oriana, it may be like the likes of an Oriana vein, and my thinking might be protect the vein comp. They might leave Oriana open. Now I don't know if that was a bait to Gambit to say, hey, Alex, lock in Oriana, or if it's the comp they want to pill. Well, if it was, Alex wasn't falling for yeah. it because he insta-locks assisted fate. Uh, we also are going to see the Snoop Doggy here once again as NASA's picked up for Snoop. We've been waiting for that one all day. <laughs> Got it out on Twitter yesterday. When he plays Rengar and we can get the Snoop Lion out there, it's even better. Oh. Uh, but on the other side, Gambit going in for the Twisted Fate, and we're going to see an Evelyn here for Diamond in the Jungle. I'm very happy to see that. So uh, with the Leeson being banned out, Diamond Prox is going to a Another one of his sort of signature champions. Evelyn, who we did very, very well with at the All-Star game, has not necessarily had the same level of success uh, during the spring, the summer split now, but is definitely going to be a decent pickup, going to help out the ganks. And when you combo the likes of Destiny with the stealthed up Evelyn ganks, it's a very scary combo. So Tristana, let's talk about Tristana here because Froggen's been playing AP Tristana. Uh, that's a definite possibility here for Evil Geniuses. Whether it actually gets locked in or not, we'll have to see, but I, I think Alex could actually have a couple of problems with that if it comes The in. theory behind it is brilliant because Zack, Eve, they have to be in your face, they've got to be jumping around, they've got to be close up to you, and Buster Shock can get rid of all of it. Yeah. So I really like the idea of it, but it's very risky, and I think Kassan is going to be better, as opposed to kicking people away, 
he can just rift walk to safety. So a little bit more of a traditional pick. Not going with the protect the vein comp that I thought they may have with, with Oriana. Instead, trying to counter pick Alex. So uh, uh, Froggen's decided that dealing damage and dealing with Twisted Fate is a little more important than protecting Yellow Peats. And we're going to be seeing Genja picking up the misfortune here as well. So. Very comfortable champions across the board for Gambit. Yeah, it's, it, and I, I would say comfort champions even for Evil Geniuses well, as yeah. well. Maybe with the exception of Yellow Pete's Vein, which is not something that we traditionally associate with him. It is a very, very good comp, and it's actually very reminiscent of what MVP Ozone ran just earlier today in uh, the OGM. But as opposed to putting an AP damage due to the mid lane, they had Zed. It worked very well with him for one reason. If the damage dealers of Cassidy and Vayne can get ahead early, it becomes very difficult to kill them because Lulu just goes Stand United. And if that doesn't work, uh, Lulu goes Wild Growth. If that doesn't work, Stand United comes in. I'm two steps ahead of myself. <laughs> His brain is too fast for even himself. Quick shot. And that is the... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so we're going get... <laughs> to get into game here then. And the final time that Evil Geniuses and Gambit are going to be meeting up here. And... As you said, comfortable champions pretty much across the board for this one. And I'm intrigued to see whether this, uh, this boot camp has had an effect uh, on Gamma in the way you said. And I think you made a good point in that they've, they've beaten yesterday teams that they'd already beaten. And today is when we're going to find out if they can really be a different Gambit and change the, the results that have been going against them so far in the summer split. So just as we're loading up into the game, the one thing I really want to talk about is a Twisted Fate pick. We've seen it once yesterday on Alex again. It was against MYM and he did very well with the champion. Twisted Fate in particular, yes, the global passive was changed, but I don't feel like that's the real nerf to the champion. The biggest change came to pick a card. And what used to happen with pick a card is you would have a 10 second timer. You'd push the button, you could lock in a gold card on the first cycle within like one or two seconds, and then you have eight seconds of zoning. Nobody can get in range, nobody can walk up to you, and because that threat was always there. That's now been changed to a four second lock-in time, followed by a six second potential to throw. So it's significantly different, and it gives you a much safer time frame to work around, and we'll have to see how well he can work against Froggen's Kassadin. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, it's not even the, the difficulty of you know, being able to pull it quicker from this one because these guys could probably do that if it's a two-second uh, time frame for it. So you know, it's all about that whole zoning possibility in there as well. And if anyone can pull this one off, Alex might just be that guy. And then you see the head-to-head. -head. We've mentioned it before. Three to zero um, is the lead for EG. And of course, Gamut didn't win in week, uh, win in week eight because that would then not be three to zero for EG. We're being trolled here by the stats, <laughs> man. He's busy working out the math on the table for the end of the week, guys, so don't worry about that one. So here we go then, level one. Right now, both teams set out in a line across the entire map. Who would have guessed a defensive start from the stalwarts of season two with semi-savage season two reminiscent compositions, albeit with some new champions. I think we're going to have a slow laning phase. Uh, you can see that both teams have actually swapped their solo laners to the bottom, both of their duo laners to the top. And yesterday when EG did this, Wicked was playing Aatrox against NIP's Mima, who was on Yorick. And he specifically wanted the matchup. He said, I can win this. I've been playing the solo queue. I want that. And I think the same situation may have come up now. Shen can do very well against Zach in the early game. So, are we going to see anything happen here? Just the side of it says, probably not from what we're seeing. But we did see Shen going down there. And it's like, ah, you know what? I'm going top, guys. I'm going to go top from this one. It'll leave that vain Lulu down in the bottom versus the Zac. It looks like both teams are going to start on the bottom side of their jungles, which means the red for Snoopy and the blue for Diamond. Technically, advantage Gambit because their wards are deeper. So they were brave enough to extend a little bit past the river, and they'll have a little bit more knowledge to work with. The Explorer ward that was put down near the red buff, uh, or the ward that was there has just been cleared out thanks to a very early pink ward by Crepo. And that do, does, serves two purposes. Number one, clears the vision, and number two, it's against an Eve. So if Diamond Prox tries to invade, he will be revealed. Yeah, that's very, very true from that one. We can expect more pink wards coming out than normal here in this game because of that Evelyn, which could be a bit of a thorn in the EG side. But we've seen Eves as well that just haven't really got going. And I'd say even Eves from Diamond that have not really got going. But look at this. Pink ward down on top of the blue. Diamond is going to be able to come across from this one 
doesn't have Smite available, though. That's the real problem. Snoopy knows that there's something up here. He's playing this defensive. He's been caught. He's going to get caught. There is a Flay coming down. The Ignite is burning. And first blood comes in for Diamond. What an execution there coming out of Gambit. Voidal and Diamond Prox read Snoopy perfectly. Voidal was hanging around the side. He did the flash flay combo, held him in place. Diamond Prox gets first blood. He gets to steal the buff away. And we may see a 3v1 tower dive against a level one Shen. This is a scary, scary time if you are wicked. Yeah, it certainly is going to be scary from this one. And interesting to see what he's skilled in first year because I'm pretty sure he's not going to have that Shadow Dash available. Faint. No, he doesn't. So this is dangerous. He's, he's one creep away from hitting level two. So with the taunt and the faint, it might keep him in play a little bit longer. Diamond Prox has just been revealed and he's actually just scared <laughs> Snoopy away. I think they want the tower more than they want the kill. Yeah, that certainly looks to be the case from this one. And But again, great zoning, positional play there coming out of Gambit and of Diamond in particular. And while all that was going on, Alexic even left the lane to move up towards top. They want to do two things here. Snoopy's been caught. Oh, that hook almost landing from Voidal there off the side. That, that could have been a dead Snoopy for a second time if Voidal had have connected there. Diamond is doing so much work right now because the, the main focus of, of keeping Shen back, keeping Wicked down, is they want to delay his level six. They want to buy a couple of minutes time where Alexic can use Destiny later in the game without worrying about Stand United. And that's definitely going to play into their favor. We've seen how impactful the first Destiny was from Alex yesterday, securing a double kill and two towers, actually. So let's we'll see if they can mirror that right now. And the problem is Wicked has no choices really right now because we know that the best way to defend against a three-man push on a turret is to have your jungler come cover it but they're behind in level so they can't actually stay there they've been zoned out of it completely wicked has to simply wait until that turret goes down and then move out but he's got to be careful on that front as well that diamond isn't sniffing around so Diamond Prox has spent more time in EG's jungle farming than he has in his own right now. Than He's, Snoopy has. Even Snoopy EG's. as well. Snoopy was forced back three separate times in the top lane. He was forced to recall, go back to the bottom lane. He's level two to Diamond's level four. He's got five CS to Diamond's 16. And he's been forced to go double golems in our Wraith camp just to try and make it up. This is a massive deficit in the very early game here that EG needs to make up. And here comes another red buff for Diamond. The first one, of course, on his side of the jungle of the game, but pretty much going to refresh that red buff as it's about to run out. So that is just perfect, perfect timing here for Diamond. He goes back away on his path. Snoopy only at level three now, right now. And look at the creep score between them. That tells a big story. Yeah, at this point in time, uh, Snoopy is just basically a non-fact. He's going to be reliant on a Wither and an Ultimate to be an impact in the later game. He's not even clearing the wolf camp. He has no idea where he wants to go. He's unsure of the pressure. And we even see Frog and teleporting to the mid lane just to not miss CS. So even that ability is not available. EG looks a little lost. Is Snoopy trying to delay the wolf camp here so that it doesn't get taken away? I mean, he needs that farm now, to be fair, to, in my opinion, to get himself straight back into this one. This is very, very interesting stuff. He's now going to go back into there. So there's obviously a big thought process gone in behind that one. And other than delaying it so that it can't be taken away, there's no other explanation in my head. The other alternative is that he was playing a little bit of bait to maybe try and see if there was any Gambit vision to try and pull Gambit into the jungle. But other than that, it's a very big questionable move. Right now, two members of Gambit trying to start off yet another early dragon. Gambit, one of the most prolific dragon control teams in the European LCS. They are scared away a little bit by Nasus. Yeah, I'll move away from that one. No danger of him hitting level 6 anytime soon, though. And now Diamond is coming on towards Frogan, who is level 6 here. And will, of course, therefore be able to just riff walk out to safety. No real danger there for Frogan as the hook landing onto Yellow Pete down in this bottom lane. And so far, been impressed with Void all this week. Last week, I wasn't super impressed with him. Well, there was nothing to be impressed about from Gambit's side at all, but he has looks like a different player completely here in Week 9. Yeah, voidal has been doing very, very good this, in the two matches they've played, and you can see when comboed with Diamond Prox, who has basically transitioned to ganking bottom lane significantly during scrims. We've heard that Diamond really likes to try and help Genji and Voidal out. What they need to do in this game, because with all the pressure on the top lane tower, Genji is 15 CS behind his opponent. And I think they smell this one here a little bit as well. The fact that uh, 
Heavily not been seen for quite a while. And Snoopy's coming down. Well, look at him. He's level three right now. And, and Alex is here going straight into this one. Alex is going to come in with Destiny. Snoopy, is he going to go down here? Wild cards from Alex are surely going to rip straight through. They're all going very, very low. Actually, they managed to pick up two kills in the process. And that might not be all. Genja's gone very low. And credit to EG. They're able to come out actually with a level trade from that. Whether Exhaust and Condemn was enough crowd control in CC to slow and delay Gambit in conjunction junction with the tower, it was able to at least get a two for two. The problem is, both of those kills landed in Crepo's backhands. And when you need your damage dealers to be scary, not your support, that's scary because Alex is the one that picked up both of them for the bottom lane. So mid lane twisted fate, not a mere destiny from the first time. Not bad. Uh, <laughs> and the, the thing is, it was Voidal that went down uh, along with the jungler for Gambit, but it was Yellow Pete, the AD carry, and the jungler Snoopy, who's already so far behind anyway. So Gambit probably going to be happy either way with how that one turned out for them. What's next on the cards? Looks like it will be a blue for EG secured this time around. There's a pink board there for Gambit, but no one really close enough to do anything about it because they're doing Dragon. So we do see Diamond Brock sitting on the Dragon with the help of Voidal. Smite is up, and you'll see Voidal tanking this one up. And obviously Diamond just finishing as quickly as possible. Gambit are really roaming and moving as a solid unit now. It's something that even yesterday they were doing a little bit more sloppy, if, if I'm very honest. Their games were a little chaotic. They were kind of all over the place. But they're moving with focus and direction now. And it's working very well as they secure that first dragon and a three and a half thousand gold. So Snoopy has now managed to hit level four. This red buff's actually going to be going over to yellow Pete by the looks of it. No, it's not. Snoopy's just going to smite that. He needed the help with it so that he doesn't fall low enough that he has to go back again. And he needs the experience. You can see he's just about to hit level 5 right now. So he's, he's that far behind that he needs to pick up those buffs. Cannot afford to donate them. In addition, Pete is doing relatively okay. He's sitting on even CS with his opponent. And the lane is not, you know, it's not a lost lane, even though that tower took a lot of damage. So I think it works out best for EG. Yeah, and the fact is, he's vain, so he's going to be getting stronger and stronger as things go along. Anyway, Genja has got two out of a possible three Doran's Blades, we're going to say for this one. Picking up those uh, Berserker Greaves uh, from the start of this one after getting those two assists in there for the two kills that Alex Itch picked up, and that's given him the sheen here as well. Now, the biggest item pickup that's happened in the first ten minutes here is the fact that Diamond Prox already has his Spirit of the Elder Lizard and combo that with the stealth, the damage that he already has, these next couple of minutes are very crucial for EG. If they continue to die and lose objectives like Towers and Dragons, Gambit can really get a monumental advantage that may be too difficult to come back from. If, however, they hold on, they may be able to stall out until Eve's damage and power isn't quite as powerful. Well, Diamond is waiting here once again by the Wraiths, and look at this. The bottom lane is coming up from Gambit. They're going to five-man push the mid turret. Genja's got bullet time as well, so if any crowd control lands, Genja will throw that bullet down on top. Going to pop the impure shots, and they're going to get the middle tower. Yeah, no problem. They don't even need to use those ultimates at this point. The, what they were going for is that turret, and they managed to get that one without any reply. That was very quick movement from Gambit as they push that bottom lane out, move the mid lane, the bottom lane into the mid lane, and it looks almost too easy for them. That was very reminiscent of Meet Your Makers yesterday. Yeah, and th you know, th the main thing is they're using the comp to their advantage. Eve is a very quick champion. Zach can fly across the map with that slingshot. And, you know, when Misfortune's strutting everywhere, that's a lot of movement speed. Wicked finds himself very overextended gold card. He's about to get locked in. Well, Alex decides just to farm instead, and Diamond backs away. They, they could have done that, actually. I mean, even though that's a lot of HP on Wicked, he doesn't have much resistances. Yeah. Be an impossible target for them. Damn, no. Wants his buff series. Not going to let any of his buffs get stolen this game, that's for sure. Very possessive of his own jungle, his diamond. <laughs> he, will, he will kill you if you come in to his side. Um, so he's going to be able to take that. Right now, it's a 3,500 gold lead for Gambit. Has Froggen here just headed home, or is he? Darian's actually going to go in there and auto attack it and say, well, you can't kill me anyway because you've got really nothing built up to do that. I'm just going to annoy you. 
So Darius moved himself to the mid lane and they've sent with the fight up top. Here comes Shane. Yeah, Stan United coming down towards his bottom lane. Interrupted there indeed. Twisted fate it was. It was Alex Hitch that pulled that one off. Ping's going down on towards Alex. They're going to close in onto him here with three men. Snoopy coming down as well. There is Destiny Pop, but are you going to get away? No, you're not. Wicked picks up the kill. It's 3-3 now in kills. So they even up the kill, but that was a little bit questionable. How is it possible that a Twisted Fate without expanding Flash could just walk up to Wicked? He's got to pick his time to stand United a little more closely. Darian and Diamond Prox are moving to the bottom lane here. They want to do another tower dive. With Let's Bounce and the uh, Agony's Embrace, this is a dead Yellow Pete and Crepa. Oh, that's a very big face check coming out. Wild Growth does go down there on towards Yellow Pete. The bounce is coming around as Voidal will tank up the turret, hooking Yellow Pete. Kill comes down, but Voidal's going to die here. That will be Crepo getting himself another and look at Froggen. He's picked off in the end by Diamond. Genja goes very low. Crepo has to flash away. Diamond's actually got no mana from this one. Had the red buff and thought it might be enough to push through with that, but it won't be. And that will end with 8-2. Two for one in favor of Gambit plus a turret. So the tower and the kills, that is a very big advantage. Once again, carries were taken out. They only lost their support. And if you're losing Boydal for a Froggen and a Yellow Pete, that is a trade Gambit will do over and over and over again. And remember, Froggen teleported into that. He jumped into the fight to try and react and try save them. But I don't think he quite calculated how much damage and how much scariness was around. I want to highlight the fact that bullet time wasn't used because I feel like Genji was very hesitant on his bullet times yesterday and he is hesitant again today. Yeah, and the thing is, he was hesitant, but the ones that he did throw off were made to count. So we'll see how that all develops a little bit later on here from Genji. He's got himself those three Thorns plates and the BF Sword now added in there as well. So nothing really changing from Genja's build plan from day to day. Yeah, the Genja build, it, it, it's a variance of uh, Bloodthirster Lost Whisper GA, or now Triple Dorans, Bloodthirster GA, <laughs> something like and that. Here, possibly. I know you picked up a Black Cleaver relatively yeah. early yesterday and that worked fairly well for Genja, but I definitely think that uh, if they continue to press objectives like this, I would prefer to see Genja a little bit further in the back line and putting the bullet time down. It's a fairly short cooldown. Even at level one, it is only a, a little over, you know, a, a little shy of two minutes. And between fights, that's basically what we're waiting. Well, look at this. Another buff steal coming out from Gambit. Genja says, thank you very much. I'll have that one. And that will be a little bit less for Wicked, even more less for Wicked, who's he's now got himself up to level eight. So he's finally clawing his way back there on the levels. But it might be just too little too late as Genji goes very, very deep. Yeah, especially when you look at the itemization here. You've just got the Kindle gem sitting for Snoopy and uh, over for Diamond Prox. A haunting guy is already completed. Combine that with Agony's Embrace and those hate spikes, it's very, very scary. Even Wicked, that's two hate spikes that have chunked down 15% of his HP. Oh, now they're going in here on towards Crepo and they absolutely explode him. Snoopy trying to get away, but he's going to be hooked in. There's a taunt down. The box is there as well. Here comes Genja. Is he going to go for the bullet time no he's not gonna bother they don't need it right now they've got three kills they're gonna get the inner middle turret as well and another out of nowhere perfect execution from gambit that looked like they were overextended there for a minute two versus three and all of a sudden there's five there from gambit it was the perfect flank as wicked does manage to sidestep the hook Froggen's now jumped back in to try and defend, but he's forced out instantly. And I talked about how crucial these few minutes were for evil geniuses. They have not contained the Russians. And right now, a five tower to one is a 6,000 gold lead. 6,000 gold, 2.3 to spend for Alex Hitch's Twisted Fate, and 1,000 each for um, both Evelyn and Miss Fortune at this point as well. So more spikes of power are going to be coming the way here for Gambit. And well, as I said, they just look so well coordinated, but also because of this lead that they have, they're not really being challenged too much on those towers. And that's what happened to Meet Your Makers yesterday. They kind of bowed out without ever really being able to do anything. I want to say a similar thing happened to Ninjas in Pajamas yesterday. Yes, when they were playing, dogs. they simply didn't contest. They simply didn't fight. It, it was basically a one versus map game because the team never got involved. Now, EG tried to sneak a dragon away, but now they're in trouble. They are in trouble from this one. Genja hanging off towards the side from this one. We see the first kill coming down. It's Alex at the backside. He was doing the work. He's actually going to take a lot of damage, but the bullet time comes through. It's done a lot for them as well. Finally, they finish off Alex, but at what cost for this one? Wicked headed back out towards the brush. He's going to try and stand United. He's standing nowhere from that one. It's only Froggen that survives once again. A four for one for Gambit this time around, and they stop dragon. 
Dragon with just a press of R from Alexic. Every single time Gambit pick a fight, they secure an objective afterwards. They got top tower off the first blood. They got two kills on bottom on bottom lane, lost it, but picked up a tower as well. Middle lane fight, secured two towers, and now Dragon as well. This is a 10,000 gold lead before 20 minutes, and they're already basically tower diving. We've seen it twice already this game. Gambit, it's just a matter of time before they force the next objective and maybe start considering Baron. They're so strong right now. Well, Baron, an option for them less than most teams uh, throughout the course of the season. So we'll see how that one goes here as Froggen going to come in on towards Darien. froggen has got two levels on him here, but in usual Darien style, he doesn't care. Doesn't care, hasn't <laughs> died yet either. And Secret Agent Genja, 009, picking up all the assists, all of the kills, centralized and focused here on Diamond Prox and Alex Edge. And that is a good sign for Evil Geniuses, because if they can kill, I would say, Diamond Prox more than Alex, that consistent damage and that scariness in team fights is significantly reduced because the gold is so heavily focused on those two champions. And look at this. Gambit instantly pinging now for their next target here, objective wise. It's going to be that. You know, turret in the middle lane. Diamond actually going to come through here on towards Wicked. He's got no the turrets hook. anywhere near him, and he is going to shadow dash away there. Hook came through, but in the meantime, as I said, they're going to push down towards this uh, inner turret in the uh, top lane as well. And honestly, with that Lich Bane in there for Alex, it's not lasting very long. Yeah, bullet time is available as well, so if a fight were to break out, Ginger could just throw that one down. Gold card catches Frog, and nobody's going to follow up onto it, though. No, no follow up. Actually, there was a hook there from the side from Boiler, which also wasn't followed on through and Gambit don't care. They just wanted to take that turret down. They've got all the vision control right now with Voidal having that Oracle Elixir on to him. And now they may try and finish off this opening in. That's definitely a possibility, but very crucially, Blade of the Rune King was just secured for Yellow Pete. So in dueling potential or dueling fights, he's going to have that active, which is still very, very strong. Five-man Gambit, they started auto-attacking the inhibitor, but Genji is not in auto-attack range just yet. It's this standoff before we see who oversteps their bounds or who manages to land that crowd control first. Oh, Diamond, look at him. He's kind of stalking off in the shadows here at the side, trying to get a decent angle to actually come around the side of them. And in the end, Gambit say, you know what, guys, we can't quite do this one. We can't force this. It's too risky. Let's back off from it. Take their blue buff here, possibly, as uh, Frog and Wicked coming out. This is pretty dangerous stuff actually coming out as a stun card lands on towards Wicked. Darian dives head first in towards him, but Wicked able to walk away from that. Froggen is caught on his own in the lane, but Gambit concerned more by the inhibitor here. Yeah, there's a few things that pulled him backwards. First of all, the lanes are pushing against Gambit. Both top and bottom are going to be on their, their lane, their side of the river very soon. In addition to that, their blue buff is up. The EG blue buff was up, and that's what forced them backwards. And now we're just in this little bit of an awkward phase where Gambit is still stacked but they're not really ready to fall back. They still feel in a power position, and they're trying to take advantage of it by looking for a fight. Well, they all just stood on top of a wall there and had to ping Voidal back because he missed it, apparently. There's a hook coming through. Froggen not going to be caught out by that one. The red buff's there as well for the taking, if Gambit noticed. Yeah, and even if that hook had landed, that would have been a scary hook to follow up because Gambit were on full retreat. There was nobody nearby. Genji's doing the best he can to steal this buff away, and he, he will do it relatively safely. And as long as he doesn't get spotted, he can make it back to the rest of his team to try and defend their first tower. And the first time that Gambit left to defend all game. Yeah, and there's the ulti actually coming out of Diamond here. Are we going to see them going in? Destiny comes in. Bullet time comes from the side. They're being absolutely ripped to pieces from this one. Let's Bounce comes in there. That's two kills coming down. Darion, is he going to get the slow? What? Hooked over the wall in the middle of the rift walk here. Froggen, is he going to be able to fall? He goes off to towards the backside, but they're gonna follow through. Diamond's been attacked by the minions, but he will survive as well. And that, in the end, will be a three for nothing. Yellow Peak getting away with what looks like zero health there. Very, very little. Crepo walked away as well, but that hook to catch up with Froggen, amazing. And even more impressive now, because of the kills they've got, they've got enough damage and enough tankiness early to force an early Baron. Because of the, the advantages they've built up and the composition they have, they can take this one down before Evil Geniuses can even respond. There is a teleport available for Froggen. He is going to be alive in five seconds, and he may try to but there's no wards. He can't even get in range. No, can't even get in there. And Darian... He's tanking up the Baron pretty much there the entire time. Going low, but not low enough to be worried. And that is the first Baron of the game going over to Gambit. And they're going to shop with all that 
well, lots and lots of gold that they've got. And this is something Gambit did yesterday as well. The reason I, I felt like uh, Baron was an objective for them, they took a 17-minute Baron yesterday against Alternate, if I recall correctly. They got a top lane fight, took the tower down, got some kills, and then with the advantage they had, they took Baron. And it's just something that as a team, I think uh, Gambit and SK have learned when they can do it within the boundaries of their composition. Now we just saw one wild card pretty much taking Yellow Pete to half HP. That's how much dangerous, how much more dangerous Alex has got since that last shopping trip. Adding in that Rabadon's death cap now to his Lich Bane. Also means that when it comes to pushing down those uh, turrets and inhibitors, that they're going to do it a whole lot easier. And if you look at the items there and, and compare Frogan's them, in trouble. Well, yeah, Frogan's going to get caught out from this one. Uh, Alex actually going pretty low from this one. Here comes Diamond from the side. Frogan going to try and riff walk away. Slippery character that he is. There's a stun card pulled. Are they going to have the range? Ooh. Yes, he goes to Yellow P. Masses of damage. He flashes over. Krepo trying to be a hero. He goes down again. That's a double for Genja. And Alex is alive. Alex just decimated Yellow Pete's HP bar. Yellow Pete needs to pick up some magic resist very, very soon. We've seen a second item Guardian Angel from Candy Panda in the previous game, and I think that's exactly what Yellow Pete should be doing now, because he's simply not a threat. There's, there's nobody that's going to be afraid of him because of how tanky and scary Gambit is. I think he was a little bit unlucky there as well. The wild cards were actually meant to go towards Froggen, and Yellow Pete appeared perfectly on the left-hand card, which compared with, uh, which added in there with the stun card as Froggen here is going to be face-checking and then Rift walking away. Froggen would have been dead so much more in this game if we didn't have that Rift walk. Yeah, that's the truth. One, two, five right now. Diamond Prox, they're trading good damage. You know, even when Froggen can get some spells down, it's enough to at least, you know, hurt. But there's no backup, there's no follow-up. Snoopy is still only sitting on that Kindle gem and only recently completed a spurt of the Ancient Golem. He is so far behind right now. He's a non-factor in these fights. Yeah, absolutely not. His wither goes down, and that's pretty much all she wrote uh, from that side. It's Voidal. You're actually going to get locked up, but that might just be a catalyst for them to go fighting through the bullet time. Has hammered away at Genja. He gets two from that. There is Alex coming in with Destiny at the side. It ends with a triple kill as Snoopy goes down as well. And I tell you what, Gambit might just look to finish right here, right now. Yeah, they've got so much damage with that Lich Bane death cap combo on Alex and all of the attack damage from Genja. They're going to be able to take out the first Nexus turret. This is a 25-minute game as they're onto the second Nexus turret. Another flawless game for Darian. Mission Impossible secured twice, and they're not done yet. Oh, still picking up kills here. Alex gets himself another onto Crepo. Well, the Nexus is going to go, and Gambit will be evil geniuses for the first time this season. And what a crucial time to do it here on day two of our final week when everybody in the middle of the pack is tied up. Brilliant, brilliant play coming out of Gambit. And I think we can now safely say, quick shot, the boot camp worked. Think is the understatement. This just 100% confirms it. Gambit came out swinging. They read Snoopy from the very, very first blood of the game at what, about two and a half minutes on at the blue buff and just steamrolled them from there. Every single tower, every single dragon. Two flawless players on the side of Gambit in the form of Darian and Genja once again. Flawless performance. 7 0 11, Genjo. We saw that bullet time there at the end, and that's what we were talking about. He didn't use it too much but when between he levels of 6, 9, uh, 10, even. But as soon as he got to the big fights there at the end, he was not shy to let rip with that, and he was doing so much for them. So the thing about that team fight that really had me questioning as soon as it started, it looked as though Voidler got caught. It looked as though. He as was he there. did yesterday. But I felt like it was bait. I felt like the way he moved in, there was still a tower up. You know, he was moving into the base. And initially, I was like, maybe you shouldn't be going for Thresh. Just let him go. Let him go. And unfortunately, all of EG piled in. And Genji just sat on the other side of the wall and said, what are you going to do? Bullet time across four of you. With a, with a let's bounce from Darian, who instantly leaped over the wall, got them all knocked up. That's the perfect time for the bullet time. So the thing about this game as well, so uh, Gambit are now 3-0 and on the weekend. That was uh, uh, EG's first loss. They've beaten teams they've already been beaten, and now they've beaten a team that they historically have a rich and storied history with. They know how to play against EG. So we'll have to see how the next two games go because they, they seem to be checking all the boxes. They're consistent from the split. They're beating teams they used to beat. And where to go from here but up? Well, we'll have to see about that one in our coming games here for today and tomorrow. But for now, we're going to hand over to Demon and Jason at the analysis desk for a look back at the game. Thank you, Mr. Joe. And wow. Wow, wow, wow. Joe just said it himself. You know, 
When they boot camp, it seems to work. And Gambit, once they buckle down, once they find a little bit of time to get that proper practice in, they absolutely demolish teams. I think one thing we really need to do right now, take a moment of silence. Second game in a row, Darren hasn't died. <laughs> that is impressive. That is really impressive. But yeah, I mean, when Gambit won a win, you're definitely right. They, they work for it and they make it happen. And that game, I mean, I wanted to show a replay from that game. But then I realized it's probably illegal to do something like that, to show something like that. But overall, it was just really, really well played by Gambit. You saw a lot of comfort champions. Diamond, who hasn't been successful on Evelyn this, this entire season so far, did really well this game. That level one, or not level one, but the early kill he got on a Snoopy, refreshing his double buffs, gave him such a huge advantage because he saw them take advantage of that by going top lane and pushing Wicked off the turret right away. And I think you and I both know how much he hates when that happens. And obviously we saw Frog in here, the casting, trying to counter out Alexic's twisted fate. Didn't really work out. Yeah, it's, it's kind of unfortunate because he was actually out farming at 188 to 154 CS at the end of the game. But Kasson, you need that like little kill, a little bit of a bump in the beginning just to kind of start getting your kills coming in more and more and more. And Gambit, I mean, they took, a, was it like a 17 minute inhibitor turret, like a 16 minute inhibitor yeah. turret. And that is really early to do. This game had low farm across the board. At about 17 minutes in, or 19 minutes in, we had 130 CS on Alex as the highest CS in the game. Usually you see close to that 200 mark at that point. And that's something I want to talk about, because how many times have we mentioned the fact that Genja's off farming? He exactly. wasn't doing that. He was in with the team. He went aggressive. He was constantly going in there. And sometimes he was the first man starting the fight. Yeah, we actually saw that happen yesterday. And that was like the big thing, the big change. He's always off farming by himself while the rest of his team is grouped up pushing somewhere. But since he started to come with this team, He's actually still staying ahead in CS, and he's still picking up a lot of kills, and it gives Gambit so much more control around that map. And the thing was, he was actually behind in CS in the beginning of that game. Because of the play they made early on, he was behind 20 CS against uh, Yellow Pete. But in the end, he ended up going up about 50 CS. Well, thank you very much, Jason. We are, of course, going to go across to our interview. And it is one of the men that have made a huge sacrifice to be here today because it's his wife's birthday. And yet, here he is, Alex Hitch, alongside Shox. Thank you very much. We'll get into that in a second. First, we're going to talk about the game a little bit, of course, Alex. Another victory here for Gambit. Now, going into this one, EG Gambit, that is a classic matchup. You know this team very well. So what were you mm, maybe careful for going into this matchup? So we knew almost every hero that they will pick. I think that was really a huge advantage because they're picking the same heroes against us and they won with this one time. So we were thinking about that. Uh, we banned out the most scary heroes of Rogan, it's Ari. Uh, we were not sure if he plays Fizz or not, so we decided to ban it because, you know, we just like to ban it because it's fish. <laughs> and uh, we banned out Jarvan, so we were pretty sure that Snoopy will pick Nasus. And uh, after that, it's like, uh, it was pretty obvious that they would Fizz pick Shen because it's a really good pick. And uh, we knew that they will go with Shen, Cassidy and Vayne comp. And uh, so uh, we decided that uh, Nasus is uh, really good to play against because I can freely stay mid with Twisted Fate and uh, against Nasus and Cassidy. So around that we got really good pick and it worked. Yeah, let's, let's delve a little deeper into that Twisted Fate for Ganda playing against Nasus first. Twisted Fate, uh, there's been some changes to him, but you obviously still think he's viable. So what do you think of the changes for your playstyle? So I think that Twisted, uh, the changes, there was huge nerf of the card because you can't lock a stun card for 10 seconds, it's only 4 seconds now, and it's only 8 seconds rotation, and it was 10 seconds too. But uh, there was some hidden slight buff for Twisted Fate player, because all the gold is now going to Twisted Fate, <laughs> and I really love that, because uh, it uh, gives you a really huge advantage against other mid laner, and not every player is thinking about that, because um, uh, the gold was distributed between all the team, and the only players that need that gold is AD carry and the Twisted Fade. And now, if you are going for some you know, comp around Twisted Fade, that Twisted Fade needs farm, it's even much better. A lot of kills went to you indeed. Uh, tell me about that four-man gank in the bottom lane, which eventually didn't turn out that well. So there was huge mis miscommunication uh, between us. We knew that uh, Nasus should come there, and we wanted to gank it before he will come. But Diamond thought that it would be better to get the red buff and get the Drake freely. And we wanted to dive three men. So uh, because of that miscommunication, we, like, uh, we lost our timing on that gank. And uh, uh, Nasus could come and Cassidy TP'd. So, but it still went really well for us. It could be much worse. 
So it was only two for two, and I got two frags, so I could snowball. Yeah, the kills went to you, so that was very good. Um, one last question about the game. Maybe you said you anticipated the Nasus pick, and is that why you, you spent so much, um, you put so much effort in making sure that Evelyn was able to roam early and get those kills early? So we really wanted the Nasus pick because Evelyn is uh, one of the best junglers against Nasus and Jarvan would be much better against Evelyn because uh, Evelyn totally negates Nasus slow and uh, we, I think that was uh, their choice that Nasus started red buff and their uh, double lane couldn't help Nasus and they didn't invade on our blue so it was, uh, it is pretty uh, it happens really often that your second buff gets denied because of that. It happens to a lot of t teams in NA, in EU, because uh, yeah, the double lane got nothing to do at early if they are 2v1, so they can, the support can roam everywhere, so he just goes to the buff. All right, so it turned out very well for you guys. A good snowball and another victory, 3-0. Now, it is not often that someone volunteers for an interview on the couch, but you did because you have a message for the home front. Yeah, so I want to say... Happy birthday to my lovely wife, Katya, and I want to sing happy birthday song. So I'm not the best singer, but still. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Katya. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Katja, of course, from everybody here in the studio as well. Thank you very much, Alex, and good luck in their upcoming yeah, matches. thank you. All right, as for us, we're going to take a short break, but when we return, the Lemon Dogs take on Alternate.